All right, art students, this is a color wheel. We're gonna deal only with this side today. This is what your final product is going to look like. And as you can see down here, we're dealing mostly with hue and temperature. We'll get into Valium Chroma on the other side. So a couple things to point out at first is that there are three triangles right here. This is what we're going to begin with. And we start with these because these are called your primary colors. They're primary because you need them first. You can't make them with anything else. It doesn't really matter what order you put them in because you can always rotate the wheel. But they are yellow, red, and blue. Red, yellow, blue. And I would encourage you to take notes up here if you're not familiar with some of these concepts. These names, red, yellow, and blue, are colors, and the fancy art word for that is hue. Those two things are the same. Color and hue are the same. To begin this, I use my clean water jar here, and I'm going to put clean water in each one of these ovals to start to activate that color. I'm going to keep the paper towel in hand so that as I need to, I can squeeze some of this out. When I'm working today, you're going to see me go directly from the oval for these colors. And I want you to take your time. You should be developing your painting skill set. And so technique, craftsmanship skill, that can really only come if you slow down and have that dexterity. So don't just rush through this and make crazy marks through here, try to contain your area, not because coloring pages are important or art is about staying in the lines, but because if you don't ever develop that technique, that skill, you won't have it to use later on. So I'm not looking for perfection. You can see I came outside the line there. But if you're, you know, perfection minded, you can always fix some of these things. So this is real quick showing you how to do this. Start with your primaries. We're only going to use red, yellow, and blue, as you see from my palette today, to complete this. I do want strong color, though, as much as possible. I don't want it to be, like, real, real thin. Okay. So now, once we have primary, when we mix the two primaries, we produce secondary. Some of you may know this from experience, but what do red and blue make? Well, the easiest way to do that is to take your two fingers, to pinch them together, imagining that you're combining those two so they'll meet in the middle, and you will produce a mixture. Let's just go ahead and see what that does. So we'll put red on our palette. And what you have to start to get some experience with is how... Uh, how to balance these things so it may not be 50 50 you know these two colors are both fairly dark so they produce a dark color when you put it down there's a little hair here that keeps bothering me uh, the white of the paper is going to show through a little bit and show you that oh this is purple so one of our first secondaries is purple now I don't want to rinse anything out just yet and I want to develop these little pools of related color. This is something you use all the time in painting. So if I take this pool and on one side, I push it a little bit more toward red, you're gonna have kind of a plum color. I may wanna be careful about touching the seam exactly because that red's gonna come creeping in here now but it's not super important. We actually kind of want it to look like the red is fading into the blue as we wrap around the color wheel here. So I might, you know, I might fight against that for a little bit and try to fix it, but I don't, I don't necessarily want it going back the other way. Well, now I may rinse a little bit of this out, but on the other side of this puddle, I'm gonna push it a little bit more blue. And so you may end up with something on this side that is a little bit more blueberry-like. You just don't want it to look exactly the same. 
as our blue color. It should be kind of moving toward purple, moving toward transitioning from blue into red. So this little pile of color, or puddle of color system is a good way to approach color mixing and uh, later in painting we talk about opening up your palette. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to squeeze this out. I'm going to soak this up because I want this mixing area to be ready to go for a new set of colors. I don't really want that influencing any part of this. Okay, so now coming this other way, we're going to do the same exact thing. We know that one of our secondaries is purple. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to imagine taking red and yellow and smashing them together. That's how you know what to mix. That's how the color wheel is arranged. Bring them together here, and we'll see what happens there. Yellow in any media, watercolor, acrylic, oil, doesn't matter. Yellow is always the weaker mixer. So I wouldn't dig around in the red and try to go 50-50 on this one. I think adding a little bit at a time is probably the way to go. And you're going to produce an orange. Crop that in here. And then we're going to use the same strategy where we have a little related pool of color on either side. If we add a little more red, red orange, and it looks sort of tomatoey. And this is all relative, just so you know. You may look at this and be like, well, that's actually orange. You should have that over here. There's nothing wrong with adjusting your mixture making this a little more orange here and making this a little more strongly red. You can do that. You could also say that, well, you know, it's, it's kind of, as soon as it starts moving away from this red, which is sort of fire engine red is cooler, um, it's becoming orange no matter how you look at it. So it's about the relationship of this color to this one. Um, but just showing you how you can do a color wheel here. And then I'm going to grab more yellow. And I want this to look kind of like a, a golden yellow color, whereas the one that we have here is sort of lemony. And I just don't want it to get quite as orange as that. i probably add a little bit more of this. And again, the thing to be looking for as you're completing this is does it look like it's transitioning from one color to the other as it's wrapping around? Does it look like it's sort of moving in the direction of the other color? So now we see that uh, another secondary color is orange. And then on the last one, we'll do the exact same thing. We'll take our yellow and our blue. We'll smash those together here. And for whatever reason, as I'm working today, these colors are a lot more watery. I want to make sure that I'm using a pretty paint-heavy mixture. But I'm also having a lot of hairs shed from my brush. All right, yellow. Again, it's a weak mixer, so I'm going to slowly add this in. And you see we'll come up with green. I'll drop the green in there, and that's a little bit more of a paint-heavy mixture, a little more solid. It doesn't drip.